ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವೀಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ರೋಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಅಡ್ವೆಂಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಮಿಸ್ ಅಡ್ವೆಂಚರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಸ್ ರಾಮನ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ so i've been devoting a lot of thought to helping people in general approach this spiritual knowledge now let's take another look at our good old chart huh this is called the chatur darshanam the four views the four views of what the vedic truths So in the earliest stage the dwaita stage we're not even going to talk about the pashu <laughs> it's useless but in the dwaita stage a person cannot comprehend cannot even conceptualize liberation moksha so the dwaita religions preach heaven Huh? go to heaven and live with god forever and enjoy huh? so the only problem with that is there ain't no such thing as forever in form so even if there is some heavenly realm and even if you can go there huh? there's there's no such thing as forever because we're talking about living with a form having a body although the body may be subtle it may even be spiritual it can't last forever so the problem is <laughs> the real aim of vedas is liberation moksha kaivalya huh and there are five types of liberation we're not going to go into all that here but anyway the people on the bottom stage who are addicted to duality and living in a body uh, where the body is different from the self but the body is always different from the self because they are an individual right all of this is more or less imaginary and certainly temporary so when they actually leave their body they have this expectation oh, i'm going here or i'm going there is that real well <laughs> it depends on a lot of things that are outside the realm of dualistic knowledge for example the law of karma and how the law of karma works this is all inconceivable to the person on the dualistic platform dwaita vada huh but as one advances in the dwaita religion and uh builds up a bank balance of punya good karma then it gradually becomes possible to conceive that there might be a higher stage <laughs> in the beginning of dwaita forget it i remember when i was in dwaita religion uh, the people talking about ultimate liberation were the enemy <laughs> <laughs> why because it means the end of individuality the end of personality the end of the world uh, the end of existence even the end of consciousness oh my god you know <laughs> that sounds terrifying to a person who's in duality who's addicted to individuality who wants to come back again and again to this world or some world hopefully a better one to enjoy but when a person gets to the mature stage of dwaita vada then he begins to realize the possibility that maybe not now but sometime in the distant future it may be possible to attain oneness or kaivalya or moksha liberation and this is of course 
the Dvaita Dvaita stage or Vishishta Dvaita stage, mixed duality and non duality, or conditional non duality. In this stage, the primary sadhana is bhakti. And as we discussed several times before, real bhakti means spontaneous bhakti, not under rules and regulations. That's dvaita vada. <laughs> so the people promoting bhakti as a path of rules are actually promoting a sectarian religion. <laughs> and the proof of it is how, they, how much they hate and fear other paths, especially the monistic paths. But the people on Dvaita Dvaita stage or Vishishta Dvaita stage, they can begin to see a wider view that, hey, any way that you attain love of God is good. Doesn't matter what you call it. Could be this religion or that religion. We don't really care as long as you love God. Whatever your conception of God is, that's the point. And so after, again, after a long, long time of performing this kind of bhakti, uh, for example, in my life, for about the first uh, 27 years, the first Saturn cycle, uh, I was in Dvaita Vada religion. And then the next Saturn cycle, the next... 27 or 30 years, I was in the Vishishta Dvaita cycle. And when I got to the end of that, I was like done <laughs> with dualistic religion. I said, I want out of here. I want liberation. And so that brought me to the uh, next higher platform. You see, this is the platform where actual sadhana begins. And instead of vishishta dvaita, instead of conditioned duality, it's vivarta vada. Vivarta means the world is just an appearance. Huh? The old Jedi mind trick. You're only seeing this thing. It's not real. So on that stage, it becomes possible to perform actual sadhana, sadhana whose aim is liberation in the supreme, Brahman, okay? On that platform, one knows actual truth is non-dual, but one has not realized it yet. Well, that's all right. That's at least better than being content with duality or thinking that duality is real, because it's not. Can't be. And we've gone deep into the reasons for that in our series on Ramana Maharshi's teaching. So the Vishishtavadi begins to perform the sadhana that leads to liberation, that leads to self-realization. And this is called Raja Yoga. So in Raja Yoga, from the very beginning, one is aware that there is no separate self. There is no individual. That Brahman is everything. The world is an illusion. And simply, we haven't got the adhikar, the qualification, to realize it yet. So each of these stages has a certain adhikar, a certain qualification that one needs to actualize the teaching and to reach a realization on that platform. And each stage requires higher and higher adhikars. So in our work, trying to present these teachings and realizations, we have... Uh, in our, especially in our interactions with the viewers, we've come up against this problem again and again and again. That well, We would like to talk about the way we see things on the Vishishta Dvaita uh, or, uh, or higher, uh, Vivartavada or Ajatavada. 
And a, a lot of teachers will talk like this. The only problem is nobody can understand it. <laughs> Isn't it? Don't you have trouble understanding some of these things? Doesn't it sometimes seem like a fairy tale? Like it's unattainable or incomprehensible? Well, it's not. It's, it's very attainable. Huh? In fact, you have already attained it. <laughs> you already are Brahman. But you can't realize it because it's covered over with the mind. So the sadhana on the Vivartavada stage is to get rid of the mind. To uncover the actual substrate of reality, which is pure Brahman. Pure consciousness, awareness. So, how to get the qualification so that you can actually do this sadhana? I have one friend, <laughs> the poor guy. He wants this teaching so bad. And intellectually, he understands it. But his actual realization is so far below. He's in economic slavery uh, to a state-run corporation. <laughs> and he's in emotional slavery to an abusive relationship uh, with someone who, who just doesn't understand him at all. And he has to be exceedingly diplomatic or else there's all kinds of trouble. He can't talk freely about his understanding or his beliefs. But he can't do this sadhana either because he's in such an oppressive condition of life. Um, so it, it's really a problem. He wants this sadhana, he wants this realization, but he doesn't have the adhikar, so he can't do it. So the question is, how do you acquire the adhikar to enter real sadhana, vivartavada sadhana? And the answer is, well, you have to heap up an enormous amount of pious activities in the dvaitavada stage. And then you have to develop a tremendous amount of love of God in the Dvaita Dvaita or Vishishta Dvaita stage. And this is what gives you the Adhikar to perform the Vivartavada sadhana that leads to Ajata. Huh? It's not enough to simply understand intellectually or declare that, oh yes, I'm on the Ajatta platform. It's imagination. And we see so many people like this, especially in Tiruvannamalai. The Western tourists coming every winter and they think they're so advanced, right? But you look at their life, it's a mess. Maybe they're taking drugs, maybe they're trapped in some relationship or in some economic uh, trap you know, debts and so on. They don't have full freedom. Huh? If they want to say, like, like me, oh, let's go to the Himalayas, it's too hot. <laughs> Next day, I'm gone. Huh? I can do whatever I want. Why? I have the Adi car. It took me 60 years to earn it. But now I've got it. And so I'm enjoying life like anything. <laughs> what do I do? I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I do my sadhana. <laughs> and I'm enjoying like anything. You can't believe. <laughs> 72 years old almost. I feel like a kid. <laughs> and, and I'm having so much fun. Huh? You look at me. Just an old man dressed in red cloth, sitting in the corner with some beads, chanting, huh? and now and then giggling. <laughs> because I'm having so much fun. Try to understand. This path is not dry. It's not ascetic. Huh? It's not even <laughs> terribly difficult. At this stage, it's all spontaneous. Huh? That God actually will draw you in and give you everything 
like Ramana Maharshi says, you think of God by the mercy of God. Chandrasekhar Ender also says the same thing. Uh, so once you get that mercy, man, it's all downhill. <laughs> it's an easy, easy path from that point on. But getting to that point, that's where the work is. A lifetime of work. If you're lucky, it could be longer, much longer. So how do you do this? Okay, you have to practice the Dvaita Vada and the Vishishta Dvaita Vada. So what I'm getting at here, <laughs> I am putting together a program where you can easily practice karma yoga, not just karma. Good karma is nice, huh? It leads to a better body, a better situation in the material world. But you have to take birth again, go through all that suffering. But real karma yoga is very rare in this world. It's only for those who are actually serving a self-realized guru. So we're going to show you how to do this uh, in a very easy, simplified way. I've been working on this for months. <laughs> and then the next stage, bhakti. How do you do bhakti so that you uh, acquire the adhikar for the next stage? And I've been working on this for a long time too, due to the mercy of Chandrasekharendra uh, Saraswati, the uh, Kanchi, uh, the Shankaracharya actually of Kanchi, South Shankaracharya. Uh, we finally we got the teaching together because <laughs> it's really hard, you know. Once you graduate from a stage, to go back and look at things from that point of view is very difficult because it's like, you know, like a, a snake or other reptile sheds their skin and then they go on and they leave it behind and forget all about it. In the same way, the sadhu, as he reaches progressively higher stages, he lets go of that mind from the old stage. Uh, and, and more or less forgets about it. <laughs> it becomes background. And with some effort, he can pull it up, but it's difficult. Ramana Maharshi once said, as difficult as it is for you to stop your mind, huh? it's as difficult for me to start it, <laughs> to think a thought. Uh, for a jnani is very difficult, requires a big effort. Why? He's left that behind. It's over, man. it's gone. It's like, oh God, finally, peace and quiet. So he's not easily going to start that process up again. So, but anyway, <laughs> as far as your benefit is concerned, with the help from our masters, our gurus, our preceptors, uh, I think I've been able to construct a program. When I get back home, I'm going to be starting a new series. Uh, actually, I have three series planned for Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, and Raja Yoga. How to do them easily and quickly. And in that way, earn the Adhikar to actually realize the Ajakta stage. <laughs> Om Tatsa. Oh, Harihi, oh.